Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer and today we're taking a look and installing the eTrailer trailer hitch receiver on a 2023 Hyundai Tucson. Now, this is what it's going to look like when it's installed and you can see that really all you can see is going to be the receiver tube opening which is nice because you get all the usability but the cross tube is going to be hidden behind the rear fascia so it gives it a nice clean OEM look and something that I really like about the uh, e-trailer hitch is the matte black finish. Not only is it a little bit more stealthy underneath the vehicle, but also uh, the finish makes it to where it's a little less easy to scratch, whereas the other options available of hitches are going to be a draw tight or a curt, which are going to install exactly the same. You're going to get the same uh, capacity numbers, so really you're not going to go wrong with any of them. It's just my personal opinion. I like the matte black just a little bit better. Now being a two inch by two inch receiver tube opening is gonna be a really great choice for this vehicle because it's gonna really open it up to any accessory that you're gonna want, like a bike rack, cargo carrier, even a ball mount. There's plenty of options available for this configuration. And all of your accessories are gonna stay in place with a 5 8 pin and clip. Now this is not included with the hitch. A lot of your accessories will come with a pin and clip. That's something to look for when choosing them. But if you wanna pick up a locking one, those are really nice. You can put your accessories in, lock it in place, and not have to worry about them disappearing. We have those available here at the trailer as well. We do have a rolled style safety chain loop here. So if you're planning on pulling a trailer, you can get those standard S hooks on there nice and easy. Even a larger clevis style works really well. And speaking of towing, the capacities of this hitch are pretty decent. You have a gross trailer weight rating of 3,500 pounds, which is gonna be the weight of the trailer plus the accessories loaded onto it. You also have a tongue weight rating of 525 pounds, and that's gonna be the downward pressure put on the receiver tube opening. So that's gonna be your suspended accessories, your cargo carriers, your bike racks. And with that number, that's gonna be pretty good. You could really load up a cargo carrier or even a four bike bike rack, and you shouldn't have any problems overloading that. Now keep in mind, you do want to check the vehicle's owner's manual to see what it's capable of towing before just hooking up to a trailer. And compare that with the numbers of what the hitch is rated. Take the lower of those two and that way you stay safe. You also want to take into account your ball mount as well as your ball. And again, the lowest number is going to make sure you don't overload any of the components. Now a few important measurements for when choosing accessories are going to be from the center of the hitch pin hole to the furthest point of the rear fascia and that's coming in at four inches and that's important for some of your folding accessories like your car carrier bike racks. You want to make sure that you're going to have that clearance to be able to put them in that stowed position without making contact with your fascia and this one sticks out far enough. You should be okay but double check those accessories. And uh, something else that's important too is making sure you have a ball mount that sticks out far enough that you can get your coupler on without hitting your bumper. Now as far as your ground clearance, this one's pretty good. It comes in at 15 inches and that's going to be from the top of the receiver tube opening to the ground. So that's going to help determine if you need a rise or a drop for your trailer. So you're going to want to measure your coupler height of your level trailer and compare that. And that way you can determine if you do need that rise or drop. Something else to keep in mind is when you have suspended accessories like your cargo carrier bike racks on your hitch, as you go up an incline, they're gonna to wanna to tilt towards the ground. So if you're going up a big incline or on rough or rocky terrain, keep that in mind. You just don't wanna bottom out your accessories. Now, as far as the installation goes, this one's gonna be pretty straightforward. You're gonna be removing two panels and one of them's not gonna go back in place. They're pretty easy to take down. And one of them on the passenger side is really just to give you a little bit more clearance when you take those supplied hardware bolts from the hitch and put them in the factory weld nut. So this can definitely be done in about 30 to 40 minutes in your driveway or garage. So let's take a look at that install. Now to begin our installation, we're gonna be removing this center panel here and it's not gonna get reinstalled and that's gonna allow for the hitch to actually have a place to go. And in order to get this off, I'm gonna be using a trim panel tool. If you don't have one of these, you can use a flathead screwdriver and we'll come to our plastic push pins. There's gonna be a total of four of these and to get these removed pretty easy, there's notches on all four sides of it. So that's gonna allow you to get that in, pry that center part out and the rest of it should come with it. Uh, if the center part comes out and the back part's still there, not to worry, you can still pry that out. Um, but again, this is not gonna get reinstalled. So uh, you can keep these for spare if you want to, but we will not be putting them back up. Now we also have these plastic nuts in these little spots here. It's kind of inset there. Now these you can kind of get with your hands sometimes um, and that'll come down with it. But being plastic, sometimes you wanna put some pressure on it and pull it down as you do that. Uh, and if you want to, you can use a 14 millimeter socket as well to loosen those up if you can't get it by hand. But again, putting that pressure on it and kind of pulling down as you do this is gonna make it a little bit easier.
and sometimes they'll push back up. If you need to, you can also kind of just pry on these and that's also gonna work. And then since it's not gonna be put back up after the hitch installation, you can do whatever you want with this. Um, so we'll just set this aside for now. On our passenger side, we also have this underbody panel that's gonna be removed same way. We have two plastic push pins and two of those plastic nuts up top. So go ahead and get this removed. And this will be reinstalled later, so keep this handy. Now on our frame rail here, we can see that we have our weld nut, and that's gonna be one of our attachment points, and on the Outside of the frame rail, there's also gonna be two weld nuts that that's where we're gonna be attaching. So while we're here, we do wanna take off this plug and not that it's sticking out too far, but we want that hitch to sit nice and flush against the frame rail once it's tightened. So with a flat head, you can kind of just pry this out here and we'll be doing the same thing on the other side. So go ahead and do that. Before we get our hitch in place, you're gonna to wanna to take a look at your hardware. You have six bolts with a conical tooth washer. These teeth are gonna face into the metal there. Now we have a mounting point that's right here on our weld nut. There's also two of them up here on the outside of the frame. So that's where we're gonna be bolting it up. And it, you do wanna to check to make sure that your bolts go through nice and easy. If you live in an area where you see salt or road grime quite a bit, these can actually corrode and make it a little bit difficult. Highly suggest running these through, just make sure they go in nice and even. And that way, these are gonna thread up when you have that hitch up. If you need to clean them out, you can use a tube brush. Uh, you may have to get a tap if it gets a little more extreme, but hopefully yours are nice and easy. But again, just a nice little helpful tip. That way, it makes it easier. I have Jake here, he's gonna help me lift our hitch up in place. And we're gonna to wanna to have our hardware with our conical tooth washer ready to go. And that way when we lift this up, we can start it on one of the weld nuts. And once we get one, just kind of a few threads on each side, it's gonna hold the hitch up, making it easier to get the rest of the hardware in. So we'll start by feeding it up kind of over the exhaust. It might get a little bit tight, but it should kind of squeeze through there. And then we'll just line everything up. And with one started on each side, I can go ahead and get the rest of our hardware, just hand thread it in. We're gonna tighten down our hardware using a 17 millimeter socket. And I'm gonna start on the bottom, that's gonna kinda of cinch the hitch up and then allow us to get our side bolts tightened down. So we don't need to get crazy here, we're gonna be coming back with a torque wrench to get them properly torqued. So just make sure that they're tightened down and that way the hitch is in place. With all of those tightened down, now we're gonna use our torque wrench and the torque settings are gonna be found in the instruction manual. And we'll go through and just torque them all down properly. And if you need a torque wrench, we have these available here at E-Trailer. You can generally go to an auto parts store and rent one for free, but this is just gonna ensure that it's gonna be tight for the lifespan of the hitch, but also not too tight, putting stress on the threads or the weld nuts. With all of our hardware torqued down properly, the hitch is officially installed. We are gonna put our side passenger side panel back in, so you can just push this up, put our plastic clips in, and then all that's left to do is start and join our hitch. And that was a look and installation of the E-Trailer trailer hitch receiver on a 2023 Hyundai Tucson.